Hello everyone and welcome to Sunday School. We are in Acts chapter 10 today and the title of the lesson is The Holy Spirit Teaches Peter, Cornelius, and His Family. Let's first pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we can read your word and learn about how you brought people together who were before enemies, who were separate, who were far away from each other. You did that through the power of your Holy Spirit, and we pray that you will do the same thing in our lives and in the lives of everyone that's around us today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So all along, as we've been having our lessons, we've been talking about how the book of Acts covers the period of time from when Jesus rose into heaven until the gospel was preached in the capital of the Roman Empire, which is Rome. And all along the way, we've met different people. And for our story today, we have Cornelius the Centurion and Peter as the main characters. And we are crossing an important step, an important gap that was there between the Jews and the Gentiles. Say Cornelius, it's a name. I had a great-grandfather named Cornelius. And he was a centurion. Can you think of any other words that sound like centurion? Well, we have the word century. And how many years are in a century? 100 years. So Cornelius was a soldier in charge of 100 soldiers. And he was living in the land of Israel in a place called Caesarea. And it seems that he read the Bible and he believed in God, even though he didn't follow all all of the laws from the Bible. We could say he believed it, but he didn't practice exactly as he should have. And he one time went on the, or he went to pray around 3 p.m. in the day, and it said that an angel appeared to him, and the angel said, send men to Joppa, the town of Joppa, to Simon. And so we can see here at the top of the map is Caesarea, where Cornelius lived, and down towards the bottom there you have Joppa, where Peter was staying. Peter was preaching and doing miracles in the area of Joppa. And now we come to Peter. So Peter was around noontime the following day, and he was waiting for the lunch to be ready. So he went on the roof of the house in the houses there the roofs are flat it's not like here you have to climb up a ladder and then the roof is kind of steep no there it was like an area you can go up there and do anything you want you can play whatever but peter went up there to pray while the lunch was getting ready and it says that peter was praying and he was hungry and while he was there he had a vision and that's what we're going to talk about now God wanted the people of Israel to be a peculiar people. And he's, God said they have to distinguish between unclean food and clean food. And so I put this picture. Can you see the difference? Well, we're going to see now the clean and the unclean animals. And every time when the Jews thought about food, they had to think about, is this a clean food? Is it unclean? And God wanted them to always be making that distinction. So if Jude was here, he could tell me about these animals on the left side, the goat, the sheep, the cow, the chicken, and on the right side, the unclean animals. Hmm, that is interesting. So there is actually a rule about it in the Bible. It talks about animals that have a cloven hoof and that chew the cud. And we call those animals ruminants, you know, because they ruminate they take the food first into that big pink stomach, and it ferments a little bit. It comes back to their mouth. They chew it up again, and then it goes through the other three stomachs before it goes through their intestines. So, of course, you and I and most of the animals, we only have one stomach. So these animals are kind of unique in that way. And the people of Israel, they were only allowed to eat these ruminants. Like the pig, for example, has a split hoof, but it only has one stomach. So, no, you're not allowed to eat the pig. So that's what the rule was for the Jews. Now, you can see here, Peter having his vision, a sheet came down from the sky full of all kinds of animals, and these animals were unclean animals. And God said to him, like he had said to Ananias and Paul, Arise, kill and eat. And Peter was like, What? No way. I've never eaten anything unclean. The sheet went up into heaven. 
Again it came down. Again, arise, kill, and eat. And Peter's saying, no, I never ate animals like this. I never ate unclean animals. And it said that this happened three times. And Peter was really wondering, what does it mean? And we come to the third part. The men arrive at the house of Peter. Three men, they said to him, three men came looking for you. And just that time, God told him, go with them, for I have sent them. And now we come to an amazing verse, which for us might not seem like a big deal, but it was a very big deal uh, for, for them and for the understanding the book of Acts and understanding the Bible. Because it says, Peter invited the men into the house to be his guests. Wow. So we talked about how God wanted the people to distinguish all the time between what food was clean and what food was unclean. Now you can imagine, if you knew somebody and they were eating food that you thought you, or it was unclean, then you're going to think, hmm, that person, I don't think I want to be around them that much. Especially if that person would invite me to their house, I wouldn't go because they would be serving me food that was unclean. Maybe some of you have heard about uh, people recently who they talked about they were eating bat soup. If somebody asks you to go to their house and you know they're going to serve bat soup, do you think you're going to go to their house? Probably not. You probably don't want to eat bat soup. So it was for Peter. These men were coming and they invited him to go back and he said, come in and stay tonight and we're going to go and leave tomorrow. Wow, what was the difference? Well, the difference was that Peter had seen that vision. He saw that God said to him, whatever God has made clean, don't you call unclean. Oh, he understood. Now God wanted him as a preacher of the gospel to go and share the gospel in the homes and with the people even that before he had thought of as unclean people. There was a big gap, a big barrier there, because Peter before could only eat the clean food. And now he was going to go to people who ate the unclean food and share the gospel. And now it's part four. We get back to Caesarea. Peter came there, and it says that Cornelius knelt down on the ground before him. And Peter picked him up and said, I am a man just like you. And God has showed me that I should not call anyone anymore impure or unclean because the message of salvation and forgiveness of sins through Jesus is going to go out to all the people, even the people who don't eat the clean food, who don't distinguish between the clean and the unclean. And that's what happened. Peter preached to the family, and it says that Cornelius and all his family believed. Wow, you guys remember we were talking about that with the uh, Apostle Paul before. Everywhere he went, they were conspiring against him and he had to flee. Wow, these people, they believed. And then the next thing is even more amazing. It says, just like it was at Pentecost, the whole family received the Holy Spirit. They spoke in tongues and they were baptized. And all those People like the Apostle Peter and the other believers that were with him, they realized that God had given the same gift of salvation to Cornelius and his family that he had given to them. They were the same in God's eyes. Now they could all go on and serve God and worship together, and that big gap that existed be between them before was gone. So thank you for listening, and we'll keep praying for you this week.